What is one of the best Pixar movies of all time? I'll give you a hint. Pixar hit a home run on their very first film. And what was their first film? A nice little four film saga that we all grew up with that involves some pretty fun and awesome toys that came to life and sparked imagination all around the world. Do you see where I'm going with this? Well, as much as we loved those movies, there actually are a couple of theories out there that make it a little less cute and fun. But what are they? Hey everyone, Dewey Stewart back and ready to give you some crazy Toy Story knowledge today. But before we get started, how about mentioning our incredible new sponsor, Keeps. What is Keeps? Keeps is a subscription based service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're only 35? That's crazy. And you know the best way to prevent that? It's by doing something about it. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is shipped directly to your home every three months. It's easy. Keeps treatments typically take about four to six months to start seeing results, so it is important that you act fast. Basically, the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you save. Lastly, Keeps offers you generic versions of FDA approved medications for hair loss. So guess what guys? That makes it even more affordable. Does it get any better? So if you are ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash top 10 or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order today. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash top 10. Anyway, back to most amazing. I think I've made you wait long enough, so let's count down the top 10 scary Toy Story theories that will ruin your childhood. Hit it. Starting us off at number 10 is that Wheezy is actually evil. Remember that cute little squishy penguin toy named Wheezy from Toy Story 2? Well, there's a theory out there that he is actually the bad guy of the movie and not Al from Al's Toy Barn. Wheezy was one of Andy's favorite toys once upon a time, but eventually was forgotten about and left on a shelf to get covered in dust and lose his squeaker. Well, Woody and Buzz's rivalry first started in the first movie because Andy forgot about Woody while he was playing with Buzz. That made Woody get jealous. Obviously Woody ended up overcoming that jealousy, but maybe Wheezy didn't. Maybe his jealousy actually fueled a plan to make Woody be at the yard sale and get snatched up by some toy collector with Wheezy making it back in the house himself and no longer having Woody for competition. This theory really hurts me because I remember feeling so sorry for Wheezy when I watched Toy Story 2 for the first time. I still remember seeing it in theaters and he was so lovable and he was just so hurt that you just, you just fell for him. But now I'm gonna need to watch Toy Story 2 again. Coming in at number nine, is Toy Story Illuminati. That's right, there are many people online all around the world that say Toy Story 3 is one huge reference to the famous conspiracy group known as the Illuminati. How does this make sense? Well, many believe that Lotso, the film's antagonist, brainwashed Buzz Lightyear by resetting Buzz from play to demo mode. One of the other big pieces of evidence that supports this theory is a line of dialogue that is spoken by the Ken doll. He says, he made us into a pyramid and put himself on top. It's a bit of a weird line to have in a scene and many connected back to the Illuminati symbol of the triangle with the eye in the center of it. So does Toy Story 3 allude to the Illuminati? You tell me down in the comments because I don't think I can watch this one again after that heartbreaking ending. If you haven't seen it yet, be careful. That one hit way too hard the first time around and I don't think I'm even, I'm not ready to relive it yet. Coming in at number eight is Woody and Mr. Andy. Now who is Mr. Andy? Well, I'm referring to Andy's missing father in the films. Many believe that since Woody is an old toy from an old TV show in the 50s known as Woody's Roundup, that maybe this toy was given to Andy by his father and maybe his father has since passed away. Meaning that Woody is not just a fun toy but also a sentimental and special possession of Andy's father. Uh, man oh man, did that one get like really sad just really really quick. But you know what? I got beef with this theory because in the movies you can see Andy with bed sheets and tons of posters and stuff in his room that have Woody plastered all over them. Would a TV show from the 50s still be making all of that merchandise in the mid 90s? I don't really think so. Or is it his father's? Maybe? I, I don't know. But I mean, I can't see him giving Andy literally everything that has Woody on it and letting him still use it. Because I mean, that's going to be some valuable stuff. And that stuff has got to be rare. And lastly, would they have made character bed sheets back in the 50s that look as good as the, what they do in the film? 
Eh, I don't know. I'm not really sold on this one, but let me know what you think. Coming in at number seven is Jesse and Mrs. Andy. Now, who is Mrs. Andy? Well, this time I'm referring to Andy's mom. There is a theory out there that cowgirl Jesse is actually Andy's mom's old toy. Where's the proof? Well, we all know that Jesse's former owner name was Emily, and Andy's mom's name is never specified in any of the films. But in one of the flashbacks through the films, Emily can be seen wearing a Jesse cowgirl hat. Just like the hat that Andy is seen wearing in the movies, as it looks a lot more like Jesse's hat than it does Woody's. So does that make the Toy Story 3 ending even sadder? With not just Andy saying goodbye to his childhood playmates, but also Andy's mom saying a final goodbye to her toy in that special time in her life? My God. What am I doing to myself here? Coming in at number six, we have Woody equals Lotso. That's right, without Andy, many think Woody could have ended just up as antagonistic and evil as Lotso. No, not Woody. Easy, easy, let me explain. Lotso, the big pink stuffed bear, handled his leadership at Sunnyside Daycare much like a dictator. He sucked. Lotso was accidentally abandoned in his owner's old home, and when he finally got to see her again, he found out that she had a new favorite toy and that he had already been forgotten. His little pink stuffed heart was then shattered and led him to being the bad guy in Toy Story 3. Now, if Woody didn't have Andy for his owner, many believe that Woody could have become just like Lotso. Woody's story in the first movie begins with his jealousy towards Buzz, but Woody changes his mindset because he didn't want to lose Andy the way that Lotso lost his owner. So, Woody could have been just as evil as of a character as Lotso in another rendition of the story, but he didn't. Or maybe the story hasn't ended. Coming in at our halfway point is poor Sid. There's a theory out there that Sid wasn't actually a bad kid at all. Maybe he was just a product of a poor home life. One reason is that back in the 90s, it wasn't as easy to just buy whatever you wanted online. So some think that the possibly life-threatening rocket toy that is meant for much older kids was mailed to him after his parents ordered it and didn't care that he was too young or nor that he was left alone with this dangerous rocket. There's also a scene in the movie that shows Sid's dad passed out in front of the TV with cola cans strewn all over the floor. But maybe those cola cans were actually wobbly pops and not just normal pops if you catch my drift. So maybe Sid began experimenting and building and taking apart toys and acting out because this was just a desperate call for attention and love that he never got from his parents. Who knows? And to be honest, I don't think there I think there are extremely rare cases of bad kids. Something always sparks bad behavior, but hey, I never met Sid personally, so you be the judge, maybe he is a bad guy. Coming in at number 4, we have Sid is a guard garbage man and this is where I'm going to say that he's not a bad guy now because in a scene in Toy Story 3 we can see a garbage man pick up a load of garbage all the while he is rocking out to some awesome tunes. But if you look closely you will see that this garbage man is wearing the same t-shirt that Sid wore as a kid. But this guy seems happy and in good spirits so how is this Sid? Well many people think that Sid changed his ways after learning that toys could talk and the reason he became a garbage man was that so he could save all of the forgotten toys out there so they don't get incinerated at the city dump or he can even fix them by making some weird mishmash toy combos like the baby head with spider leg or the uh, fishing pole with the with the legs you know maybe he just wanted to give some love to some toys that weren't necessarily going to get it anymore so Sid is a garbage man for now because this next theory actually gets much much darker starting us off in our top three at number three we have that Sid is actually dead whoa 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 okay that escalated quickly I mean one minute he's a garbage guy next minute he's no longer with us. If you watched Pixar's 2017 movie Coco, there is a scene with the skeleton on stage that has the exact same t-shirt as Sid from Toy Story. Toy Story 3 came out in 2010, so that means Sid worked as a garbage man until his untimely death that led him to be a rocker in the afterlife, in Coco. Maybe, I mean Coco does take place in Mexico and Toy Story is definitely not set in Mexico, so maybe it's just a small easter egg, but if Sid is indeed the rocker skeleton, then what happened? Coming in at number 2 we have immortality, the exact opposite of our number three spot. Many people believe that the toys in the Pixar universe are actually immortal. Since these toys are not actually organic living beings, many believe that these toys could in fact live forever and that the only way to meet their demise is if they are melted down. Which when you think about it, actually makes that scene in the first Toy Story with Sid burning Woody through the forehead even scarier. That's one way Woody would actually meet his demise. So 
Yikes. The other proof is that Woody, Jesse, and Bullseye are all toys from the 50s and they just keep being passed on to new owners and never really seem to age. Especially with Rex's cameo in Wally. -E. Maybe this means that he is actually aware that humans are gone and now it's just robots. Ugh, yikes. No, for that reason alone, I would never want to be immortal. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is one of the darkest theories out there. It's that Toy Story 3 is actually an allegory to the horrific and disgusting events of World War too. One possible piece of evidence that supports this theory is that when Buzz suggests that the toys hide out in the attic to avoid being donated is a reference to Anne Frank and the events that she talks about in her diary. How they hid away from all the evil people. They also believe that the toys that were sent off to Sunnyside Daycare was also an analogy to people being sent away to the disgustingly horrific camps run by the followers of this is about as dark as they come here folks and I for one can see the similarities but I don't know if this is intentional. I think the events of World War are just so sad and horrific that they are so well known that many things can be alluded to being inspired by them. Or maybe many many stories and events are secretly inspired by them and are self conscious without us even fully realizing it. Either way this one is crazy dark and probably ruined your childhood just a bit so I'm sorry. That has been our top 10 scary toy story theories that will ruin your childhood. Which one of these messed with you the most? I think number one and number 10 personally because Wheezy was so sweet and down on his luck when Woody finds him that it's so hard not to make you feel something for the guy. I mean, come on. Oh, and if some of these theories freaked you out a little bit and you maybe pulled out too much of your own hair, then don't forget to click on the link in our description and use that new sponsor of ours, Keeps. Other than that, let me know what you thought down in the comments, which one freaked you out the most, or if you have any of your own theories, I wanna hear them. I've been your host Dewey Stewart and until next time, do infinity and beyond! Maybe, I mean Coco does take place in Mexico I believe, oh let me double check that before I say that. Day of the Dead's in Mexico is it not? I'm not sure actually. Yep, Mexico, okay. Didn't want to get cancelled. Either way, this one is crazy dark and probably ru ru- oh my god. What's that? That's Santa Claus? <laughs>